so um, <clears throat> I knew Chris Benoit really well. <clears throat> and um, yeah, man, it's just one of those things. I hate to say it like this, but shit happens. And that's the quote. So uh, I think that he was one of those guys that was he, was, he was so passionate about the business almost to a fault. And I can tell you this, when I heard, because I was watching the pay-per-view live um, when all that happened, and as soon as I heard that he wasn't making the show because of a family emergency, and I went, what? And there was referee Wes Adams was down at the press box with me in Tampa. We were watching it at a, at a bar there. He said, yeah, you know, he's not making it because of a family issue. And right away I went, something's wrong. Because Chris Benoit is one of those stubborn guys that, and he would like, if anybody ever missed a show because they were sick or, you know what I mean? He was one of those guys that he would show up like, just to be there, even if he was hurt, you know what I mean? He was such a guy that was so professional, and you know what I mean? So as soon as he told me that, and TJ goes, hey man, do you wanna call him and make sure everything's okay? And I said, no, I'm not gonna call him. He goes, well, why? I said, well, what's the point? And then he was like, you're not gonna call him? I said, no. And right there, I knew there was something really, really wrong. And I'm not to say that I'm a psychic, but I have, had certain sort of feelings like stuff like that where it, you know a guy what he's kind of like and Chris was kind of an odd person and he was a, he was a very private person as well I knew how much he cared about his family not that I predicted or knew that something like that happened but I did know that there was a chance that something like really traumatic happened for him not to show up so I think Natty called Nancy and she didn't get a hold of her at all left a message and I kind of knew that. And then I kind of, I went into, because I was in FCW that, at that time, went to wrestling practice that next day. Everyone was kind of asking me if they heard anything. I was going, no, I'm sure he's all right. But I'm thinking in my head, no, I know he's not all right. I know something's up. And then when I heard the news, it was like really shocking and a real, I mean, really, really traumatic, you know, because I had just seen him two weeks before that in Orlando. <clears throat> me, him, and Chavo Guerrero, we were doing Hindu squats. They were filming SmackDown. Running the stairs, everything seemed to be fine. Well, actually, I'll take, take that back. One thing that was odd, because I said, hey, Chris, are you still doing the, because he was legendary for doing the 500 Hindu squats. I said, hey, are you still doing your squats? He goes, no, nah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just not doing them. I don't know why. I just thought, okay, you know, whatever. But maybe, maybe there was something going on with him that was making him not doing it because whenever I'd see him, he would always have like his little cup of, like a styrofoam cup of coffee with the straw in it and he'd be chewing it and be like, so you still doing your squats? Like, yeah, yeah, I am. How many, 500? Yeah, it's good. All right, you wanna do some? Like he was, he was like always kind of like, in, like that intense kind of guy. When he told me that, not, and then looking back on it when I found out about all that, you know, and Part of the big thing that I think about all that is you can blame steroids and stuff like that, but here's my opinion. One is if you go to a gym, and you probably see a lot of guys, people are gonna look, oh, that guy's on steroids, that guy's on steroids. Okay, fair enough, we can judge. Are they on steroids? Maybe, yes, no, I don't know. Are they going home and killing their wife and son? No, okay, so can you, ultimately blame steroids on the incident with Chris Benoit. I don't think it's fair to do that because, you know, and did concussions play a big role in it? I think so, probably. That's a good assessment. Do I think that when he was, at the time, he was taking a lot of antidepressants and stuff like that, a lot of depression because of the Eddie Guerrero death, the death of Big Boss Man, the death of uh, Victor Black Cat? Yes, I do. And I've also always talked about the butterfly effect. You know, butterfly does this, does this, and then all of a sudden, you know, a train hits something, boom. It could have been something as simple as that, but I think that he just, for him to have snapped like that must have been something, Nancy must have told him that she was leaving him. And from what I now know, it wasn't one of those deals where he accidentally choked her unconscious because I can tell you because I've choked a guy out on the street once it takes 
uh, you have to have the choke in for, I think it's at least two minutes for that to happen. So you choke a girl, oh shit, I, okay, I drop her, I wake her up. And from what I've heard is that the room was totally like a tornado hit it. And the way how he suffocated her and stuff makes me think, man, that is a absolutely horrible thing to do. And he's, should, he should never be forgiven for anything like that. You know what I mean? And just a lousy thing. And whatever made him completely snap like that, I don't know. It unfortunately tarnished his whole image, his whole wrestling career. And in my opinion, it's disqualified him from being in the WWE Hall of Fame. It's a lousy thing. I don't think he'll ever be in there. And that's not because he wasn't the hardest working guy in the company who inspired many. It was just because of one night where he totally went bonkers. But he was always great with me. Uh, he was actually a little bit unreliable at times, um, <clears throat> you know, with phoning me back and stuff like that. And again, that could be concussions and stuff like that, where I needed his help to, to talk to him about stuff like, hey, should I go to WWE? Should I stay in Japan? Should I go to England? Should I? And he, he was always kind of there for me, but I, he was a bit unreliable. And I'm sure other people will probably tell you the same thing. And he was a great guy. If there was anything I could have done to have helped him when he was around, I would have wished I could have. And I'm sure all of his friends would have said the same thing.